What is up, guys? Welcome back for week two of the DPL. This week, we are taking on Trick of Eye, captained by I I and Skyhorse. If you don't know I, he's been around in the community a very long time. I've known him since NPL days, and uh, Skyhorse is somebody that I got to know through the DPL. He's also a fantastic player, and they got a really cool team. They got a, a of, of players, that is. Not of Pokemon, obviously. They have a ton of teams of Pokemon. We all have multiple drafts, but they have some really, really strong players on their team. So, should be a fun series, and... If you haven't noticed yet by the thumbnail and by the length of this video, we're changing up the format a little bit. Also, this is coming up later than it should have, obviously. There, there was supposed to be a video Monday, there was no video. So I'm opting to change up the format a little bit because of the way that the views are coming through on the videos. We're gonna be doing two games every video. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is gonna be upload days for the DPL, and we're gonna have two games on each day, but compressed into a single video. So that's how we're gonna do this moving forward. As you can see, our layouts changed a little bit. We have the format right under the replay play window. This was a suggestion from my good friend Pablo, aka Anthony. Thank you for that. And now you guys can see the format without me having to say it. So anyway, this is game one. This is Oras, as you can see. And we have King L5 facing off against Sablo. These are two people that I've teamed with. I've teamed with Sablo in the past. I believe he was on our Wings team that won in season six. So yeah, this is uh, this is a very proficient player in Oras. And uh, But of course, L5 is no slouch. He's our captain, as you know. So we're going to jump right into this game. Not going to waste any time, then we'll get to the second game after we're done with this one. So, uh, we made a, uh, a very last minute change to this team, or a couple last minute changes to this team that actually really came into play here. So, let's check out this game. So, we have a Mesprit lead against Crocodile, and for some reason, turn one, we're gonna knock off and it kills the Mesprit, and it reveals to be Iron Ball. So, it's trying to go for Trick and uh, trying to give our Crook an Iron Ball, I suppose, with Trick, but uh, little do they know that our Crook was banded <laughs> and knocked out the Mesprit. Obviously, they knew that after the turn because they probably EV'd to live knockoff from Crocodile. Moving on, <laughs> we get Greninja in here and a double into Lando as we bring in our Rotom. Now, Rotom happens to be our switch into Gren and Lando, in a sense, like it can switch in on both. So I don't really understand this double from Sablo, but anyway, uh, Sludge Wave comes out this turn as we miss Hydro Pump. So that's kind of annoying. Obviously, Hydro Pump doesn't necessarily OCO Lando depending on their investment. So that would have been uh, good damage regardless for the rest of the team. As you can see, we have a couple of, of Mons that outspeed in Crobat and Superior. So that would have been really good. But anyway, next turn, Sablo goes for the Calm Mind. We go for the Pain Split, so it caught us off on that turn. We go back up to uh, 92. We should live the next Sludge Wave comfortably, no problem, except it crits us. And uh, our Rotom goes down. So now we're staring down a plus one, plus one Lando that's probably carrying Psychic specifically for Crobat with a uh, Superior being the only thing faster and they've got Sludge Wave. So essentially we just lose, except right before the game or not right before the game, but the day before the game, I would say within the, the 24 hours preceding the game, it might've been right up until like the last hour, we made a final change to the team because we were seeing that the item on Superior didn't matter all too much. And there was one specific scenario that would come up time and time again, where Serp would want a specific item and it was into this Lando. We go for Leaf Storm and we live the plus one's life orb sludge wave thanks to Kebia Berry. So great call on L5's part. I think this was Hunter's suggestion. Could have been Burger, I'm not sure uh, who exactly it was. I haven't gone back into the logs and checked, but great for us, of course. We live that and now the Lando is pressured out. They do switch out, they go into Scallopede on HP. We end up going for Glare here and we get a little bit of justice as their Lumberry pops, but they miss Rock Slide. So we're actually able to keep our Superior, switch into Registeel on Poison Jab, which is what they should have gone for initially, of course. Crobat could have come in, but I think that's a little bit of an over prediction considering we have a couple of really good switch ins and the Superior is low. But anyway, Poison Jab comes out and then Super Power comes out and it does 33. Now, we saw some really good Scally sets in prep. This was not one of them. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Megahorn, Rock Slide, Earthquake felt a lot stronger into this team than these three moves. Uh, Poison Jab Superpower was just not it. I understand you want to hit, but just take the, the miss chance on the Megahorn because it is literally the best set. Now you're stuck here superpowering into a Registeel and constantly lowering your attack. We get up our rocks this turn as L5 is able to now, I believe, Thunder Wave the Scallopede, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, it goes for an Iron Head, misses out on the KO by a little bit, but the Scally is at 3% and another superpower is just going to bounce off from here. It's going to do 19%. Uh, and we go for a uh, another Iron Head here. So Registeel still sitting pretty comfortable. Now, I believe L5 tries to sack the Registeel here. 
and Sablo pulls a double into Greninja. I'm not sure what he was predicting. I think it might have been Crobat, but even then that doesn't make much sense because Crobat outspeeds the Gren. So I'm not 100% sure what the play there was. But uh, anyway, Gren comes in, goes for a power up punch on the Registeel. We go for Thunder Wave. So now the Gren is actually slower than Registeel. If you don't know, Gen 6 cuts your speed by a fourth. Now the Greninja is slower than us, but it's going for power up punch here. So it actually gets parried that turn and our Mega Gardevoir gets to uh, Mega for free in front of it. Uh, and it goes for physical Water Shuriken. Another thing that's different in uh, Gen 6 is that Water Shuriken is, of course, physical. So that did do a decent amount of damage, but our Gardevoir is quite bulky, so we're able to tank that. In comes Lando. We go Registeel to stack it off to the Sludge Wave into the Earth Power. I still thought that Registeel looked pretty good here with Thunder Wave and just, like, hitting things. I thought it was a pretty good check into, like, Empoleon and Cofagrigus, but L5 thinks that the offense here is better overall. I do ultimately end up agreeing. I think that he made the correct decision there in sacking the Registeel. Ends up going into Superior, gets the Leaf Storm off, gets a plus two. Cofagrigus comes in. We hit another Leaf Storm and it's straight Okos. I kind of wasn't expecting that, but of course, Cofagrigus is special defense isn't that great and we're kind of anticipating like a more offensive uh, Cofagrigus here with Nasty Plot and uh, Trick Room so it kind of makes sense and then of course the last is Empoleon which I don't believe dies here no it does not die to the plus four Leaf Storm it gets off an Ice Beam knocks us out but of course we still have our Banded Crook in the back and that is a dead Empoleon goodbye that is done so that's the game and uh, L5 takes it in a very commanding fashion after those very unfortunate uh, couple of turns here with the Rotom and the Lando uh, with the Calm Mind and the, and the miss of Hydro Pump into the crit on Sludge Wave. So very good resilience from L5 to claw his way back from this game. And it's something that we didn't really see in week one. He kind of just like played out the turns. I wouldn't say not thinking about them because he was definitely thinking, but it was like, it's almost like he was playing like it was clockwork when the, the match was much more dire than that. And I feel like he was a lot more dialed in this time so big kudos to l5 on this one and our second game of the video is going to be a swish game sword and shield that sees scrappy 10 our bench player from last week that moved into the lineup this week we only have one bench slot this season so that's really cool for the team that means that like everybody can see some playtime. and he's taking on their captain skyhorse who i mentioned in the intro they have a hail team and we had a rain team and it didn't slot into their hail team which i was like kind of happy about because alolan ninetales Hail is like known to take on rain pretty well because of freeze dry and all that, right? So we actually got the more favorable matchup, I think. And I think that uh, the way that we prepped this game was quite intelligent. Honestly, the the way that we went through the motions and, and adjusted the team as the week went on, very, very smart from us. So game opens up with Copper Aja versus Drompa. Now Copper was meant to uh, check a Ninetales lead and pretty much everything really. Drompa wasn't the expected lead in this match but regardless we lead Copper, we take a Flamethrower, does 40% and we get up Stealth Rocks. Now as you can see we have like a good amount of bulk there. This is a very powerful Pokemon <laughs> in Drompa. It's carrying Flamethrower and it didn't do half so that's quite nice for us. Now we're going to switch out into Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz can tank the hits from Drompa really well and gets off a Toxic here so that's awesome. We get off a Hyper Voice and uh, then we go for a Roost here I believe and what's really cool this turn is that uh, we actually end up outspeeding the Zapdos. Now uh, Scrappy actually ran a lot of speed on this Mandibuzz to, to pull this off and he wanted to be faster than the Zap because he wanted to be able to Roost on it. Uh, and not take super effective damage from the electric moves, which was really, really smart. And this also bypasses a sub Zapdos set, right? If it was a sub Zapdos, then Mandibuzz would be faster and it would actually get off the to Toxic before Zapdos could get behind a sub, which was the idea. So they end up going for Hurricane here, it does 34%, not too much. We end up going for another Roost here, uh, just get back up to full. Keep in mind, Roost's PP is 16 in Gen 8, so we're looking good. And uh, now the Blastoise is gonna switch in, we're gonna knock it off and ends up being Rocky Helmet. We Kind of expected that as we have a Cinderace and Cinderace looks really good into the rest of the team so you kind of want something to uh, force progress on it right and uh, Scrappy is going to U-turn this turn out of the Blastoise into the Kyurem on flip turn and uh, the Blastoise is going to switch out into Jirachi now uh, Jirachi is a little bit threatening to uh, our Kyurem so Copper is going to come back in here and I believe this turn we're going to go for a Whirlwind so um big part of the team was getting up these rocks and then start whirlwinding because if you can get in nine tails and zapdos repeatedly especially if zapdos isn't helmet uh isn't boots excuse me then 
you're getting off a lot of damage progressively on the team. So Whirlwind was a really good bring. Uh, the Jirachi ends up back in here and goes for a Thunder Wave as we go for another Whirlwind. Back comes in the Blastoise, and I believe it just goes for, yeah, rest here. Uh, gets back up to full. We end up going for Power Whip and bringing it about back to where it was, honestly. And uh, this is not a good situation for Blastoise to be in, obviously. It doesn't want to be in here uh, and have to sleep talk if that's what it's running right? So they're going to switch out into Drampa on another Power Whip. It turns out not to be Sap Sipper. I think it ended up being uh, Berserk, which is what I brought in Mox as well, which is the right bring, I feel, in this matchup. But uh, the Copper is going to switch out back into Mandibuzz, take a Flamethrower. It's getting shipped with Toxic, but so is the Drampa. We go for a Roost. I believe they go for a Draco here, and uh, it does 56, so not enough still, and the Drampa is still taking more and more damage. Uh, it very likely could have Roost here, uh, but it is just choosing to lock into Draco repeatedly, and now we're going to U-turn, leave our Mandibuzz low, but that's fine because, as we discussed earlier, it does outspeed a couple of members, like Min Speed Zapdos, Min Speed Jirachi, etc., right? So now uh, Cinderace is going to come in here on the Blastoise, go for a U-turn, there's no Helmet Chip, bring back in the Mandibuzz. Here, I thought was a good uh, opportunity to bring in like Kartana or Kiram. I'm not sure why Mandibuzz came in exactly, but uh, but that was the play that Scrappy made. Regardless, Ghost for Roost, I guess he wanted to get this healthier. Saw this as one of the primary opportunities. I thought that Zapdos was a good target as well. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go for the U-turn. Kiram comes in as Blastoise finally wakes up, goes for another rest. So maybe he was just trying to kill off the rest turns uh, and not accidentally catch a like uh, sleep talked aura sphere for some reason on the Kartana. I'm not sure, but uh, ends up choosing to bring in Kirim this time on this um, on this rest. So Jirachi is going to switch in now as we're going to end up going for an Earth Power. Does 48%, gets a Spadef drop, so a lot of damage there. Copper's going to come in as Jirachi ends up going for sub. And uh, now Copper can just whirlwind if it can break through, of course, right? So we're getting, we're going to get flinched there, of course, uh, on the Iron Head. Another Iron Head comes out. I believe we get flinched again, yes. And I think Scrappy stays in one more turn here and doesn't get flinched this time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then gets off the whirlwind. Uh, and then the Blastoise is back in here now. And uh, I believe we get parried. Yep, full parried that turn. That would have been a good turn to, to get off the Power Whip. I still think that going hard Kiram here is the better play because you have the miss chance on Whip like you just saw. You have the para chance. You don't want to give the Blastoise free turns to just spin. Uh, although it isn't spin, it's flip turn toxic. So actually staying in here is correct uh, from Scrappy. So this is this is actually very good from him uh, because he has now recognized that the four moves are flip turn, uh, rest, rest talk, and toxic. I think he was scouting for the last move and he saw it at some point. He saw it the last turn on turn 26. This is turn 27. So very good actually staying in here. Uh, and now uh, gets to go for, I believe, a Heat Crash this turn. Yes. Correctly predicts that the flip turn is coming out as there's no better move for the Blastoise to click on a Copper just staying in on it and goes for the Heat Crash, catches the Zapdos, gets off a good amount of damage, and uh, once again from this point can position into the Mandibuzz. And like we mentioned earlier, the Mandibuzz is, of course, faster than the Zapdos and is going to be able to uh, actually go for knockoff. So he prioritizes uh, going for the knockoff into the Zapdos to try to get rid of the heavy duty boots. Now the Blastoise takes a Toxic, Flip turns out, so now is toxic without having been able to get off a rest. Uh, now, Mandibuzz is going to go down to knockoff here, and we are going to go into our Cinderace. This telegraphs our Cinderace is set, right? Because Kartana usually runs Scarf, uh, and if we weren't Scarf, plus one knockoff would likely knock us out. So this is the gamble. This is the play, right? So now they switch out into Blastoise. We click Pyro, Pyro Ball. They take a good amount of damage. We get to click uh, Kiram here because they're obviously going to rest this turn. And uh, Kiram is in and can now uh, go for a Dragon Dance. And now Ninetales comes in and Ninetales um, should take a good amount of damage from Earth Power uh, is the idea here. And we're actually weakness policy, but as you'll see, Scrappy DDs again on the tails, and uh, it goes for a Moonblast, and it does 71%. Now, we're quite bulky, which means this nine tails, very, very offensive. Like, specs offensive, <laughs> levels of offense. And uh, we're going to go for an Earth Power here. You're going to see it does 41% when we're at plus two. Um... 
but they got a, uh, sorry, plus one, but they got a Spatak drop. So actually, if the Spatak drop doesn't happen and we get off an Earth Power instead of going for another DD there, uh, we actually can kill the Ninetales and essentially sweep the team. The problem is without the plus two, we're not faster than a Scarf Cartana. So I think that uh, Scrappy still made the correct play here in going for the second DD. It just didn't pan out because of the specific uh, nine tail set that they brought. Now Cinderace is back in. Blastoise comes in. We go for a high jump kick this time. Get off a nice 28%. The hail is chipping away at the Blastoise as well. Uh, so there's not too much it can do here. Goes for sleep talk, hits rest. And now we switch out into Amoongus. I guess he didn't want to risk the high jump kick. Uh, missing or hitting into the Zapdos and getting static, etc. right? So just switches out, knows he needs Ace for the late game, so it doesn't take the risk. And then uh, Copperage is gonna come in on the Hurricane. Uh, it's pretty much taking not much damage from the Zapdos. However, it does finally re reveal to be Heat Wave for the first time in the game, and we do get parried that turn, so a little bit unfortunate. Uh, at this point, uh, Scrappy stays in. I don't know if he clicked Heat Crash that turn. That would've been a pretty big turn because we would've essentially killed off the Jirachi, but uh, that's not what happens. We do get full parried. And and uh, now we're going to take an Iron Head and get flinched. And I think Scrappy at this point is just going to let this go down. No, he's going to switch it to Kartana hard. And we reveal that we are leftovers. Now, um, as you can see, we've been um, like hammering away at the team with everything uh, and getting off status. Now, there's a reason for this. The Kartana is Substitute. And not only is it Substitute, it's Substitute Sacred Sword. And uh, you will see in a minute that uh, Zapdos comes in and we click protect. So we're also sub protect. So we're sub protect sacred sword. Now, if you had to take a guess on what the last move is, what would you say it is? Leave it in the comments down below at this timestamp and let me know what your, your thought is, but we're gonna reveal it, I believe soon enough. Anyway, they go for a heat wave. We are of course uh, protected and behind a sub. We end up going for Sacred Sword because the Zapdos has revealed at this point to be pressure. It's come, to, come in multiple times and pressure has actually popped. So I mentioned static before, but if you were paying attention, you would have seen that pressure popped. So now Kartana is absolutely free to click Sacred Sword into the Zapdos without having to worry about getting paralyzed. So Kartana is just sitting here, just doing its thing. Uh, just chilling, and uh, the Zapdos has to roost this off. The Ninetales comes in. I believe this is on a Sacred Sword. Uh, no, it's on a Protect. Uh, but uh, as we discussed earlier, the uh, Ninetales is actually uh, pretty offensive, but we don't believe it to be Scarfed. So uh, it, we do outpace it there and go for a Sacred Sword and knock out the Ninetales. Now the Zapdos comes back in. We're going to go for a Protect. Uh, Skyhorse goes for the Heat Wave here, and I th believe this turn is the turn that... Um, the Scrappy goes for the Sacred Sword again, yep. And now we catch a Heat Wave, but of course, now we can just get behind a sub again. And if the Zapdos, uh, we actually go for Protect here. Uh, as the Hail expires, which means we're back up to 100. And uh, now we're gonna go for a sub, and Roost comes out. And uh, that should have been a Heat Wave turn, I feel, because at this point, you gotta try to win with Kartana, but now the cart comes hard in on Protect. Um, and this is going to be a Sacred Sword, but we are also going to go for Sacred Sword and knock out the Cortana. I, I don't think we actually ended up revealing. Yeah, we didn't end up uh, revealing the, the last move, so you guys can put in your guesses, but uh, we won't reveal it until we know the standings in the playoffs and how things shake up. I'll come back to this video and I'll let you guys know. Spam me in the comments uh, or even on Discord. Join the Discord server, by the way, link in the description. Just spam me and let me uh, let, remind me that I have to give you guys the answer as to what the card set was. So um, now we, we're just sitting pretty. Cartana's at plus three attack. Zapdos comes back in. It's pressure. We just click protect. Doesn't matter. Heat wave doesn't matter. We just get behind a uh, sub again. And uh, at this point in the chat, I think I said, um, <laughs> funny enough, I said, you're welcome for the set, scrap, uh, Scrappy. And um, I didn't mean that, like, you're welcome. You wouldn't have won without the set. I meant that saying, like, uh, you're welcome and well used, essentially. Like, I just gave him the set idea. He ended up plugging it in, and I was just like, you know, bantering and saying, You're welcome for the set. Uh, I wasn't trying to take credit for his win because he played this masterfully. I think that he made pretty much every right play. There was that one play on the turn with Mandibuzz where I felt like he could go into Kirim because Sleep Talk uh, or Sphere wouldn't have really done anything. So, but I think he was trying to avoid the weakness policy popping. I'm not exactly sure on the logistics of that, but. 
Anyway, um, now we're just going to sit here and sub-protect, and the Zapdos can't do anything. It's on a toxic timer, right? They weren't able to get rid of the toxic, and at any point, the Zapdos does not rest, so this is very simple. We just sit here, we protect, and sub away as the Zapdos loses its life. Jirachi comes in and easily dies to the plus three Sacred Sword. And that is going to be game two. So now that puts us up 2-0 in the series. Great start from the boys. Awesome. And uh, I, pff, you guys are going to want to watch the rest of the week because it gets crazy. Some really crazy games and, and crazy stuff that happens. So make sure to tune in. Next video is coming out tomorrow. Two more games. I will see you guys then. Peace out.